Hello, hello. Welcome to the Productive Wellbeing Show. I am so excited. It's episode 10. Um, and today I am joined by the absolutely amazing Richard McCann, who is a motivational, inspirational global speaker, a Sunday Times number one best-selling author, and the kind of person I never in my wildest dreams imagined that I would be able to speak to like this and have on the show. I mean, this is absolutely insane what what the coronavirus is actually doing for us in one kind of good way. I mean, there's a million things that it's not doing for us, but this is a, an awesome way. Um, so thank you so much, Richard, for joining me today. My pleasure. And thanks for bigging me up there. But I am just your average guy. We're all very, very similar. And, and it's coming coming across right now that we need to pull together, don't we? Yeah, amazing, amazing. So if you are joining me live, say live in the comments. If you are joining on the replay, say replay. Um, and please like, share, comment, leave any comments in the box. Richard and I will be hopping onto social media after this to answer any of your questions, reply to your comments. Um, anything that we refer to in this talk, we'll leave all the details in the comments. Because Richard, this is how, this is like a full circle moment for me. I watched Richard's TEDx talk when I first started my business. And I watched this guy just absolutely captivate the audience with his story. And um, I never imagined that I would actually be sat here interviewing him, having him on my show. This is crazy. And um, we will leave the link to Richard's TEDx talk in the comments, which has now had 33,000 views. Wow. Richard. I don't want to talk. I want you to do the talking. So let me ask you this. Let's imagine that today we have all arrived in your audience in a, a gigantic theater and there is, you know, as many people as there are. What on earth should we be doing right now in these uncertain times? Well, I think one of the things that we all need to do, and I've been speaking about this for years anyway, so I think now now it's even more important. It's just having to accept that sometimes things happen beyond our control. My whole life's been full of you know unexpected events, probably the same for everybody watching and viewing. And we have to surrender and say, okay, this has happened, or in this case, this is happening around us right now. And of course, we know we need to keep safe and do all that self-distancing, but there's only so much we can do right now, so we have to just surrender. And, you know, despite how difficult it is, and my business is all but stopped at the moment, apart from the virtual things that I'm able to do, I have to accept that. And I'm quite calm. I'm in, in the middle of a tornado, in the middle of a hurricane, there's this little sweet spot where it's really calm. It's the eye of the storm. And right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm just appreciating life, appreciating the daffodils as I, drew in, uh, as I drove this morning. And uh, so that was my first bit of advice, is to accept. And I, I think, I obviously, I haven't got time to share my whole story here, you can watch that on the TED Talk that you're going to refer to later. But I learned this accepting 44 years ago when I lost my mum. For those that don't know, I lost my mum in very tragic circumstances. She was killed by the serial killer Peter Sutcliffe. And if you're you know, from outside the UK, he became known as the Yorkshire Ripper. He murdered 13 women and my mum, Wilma McCann, was the first. I can distinctly remember thinking to myself, OK, OK. My mum's gone. Why is this happening? And just so I accepted she'd gone. In fact, I told myself, as crazy as it sounds now, I told myself it happened for a reason to give us a better life. That's what I told myself. And my father had left when I was four. We, me and my three sisters, we set up home with him the following year. And so I guess that that and I accepted that. And I guess my my thought processes back then have been with me ever since. And and I'm utilizing and drawing upon them right now. And I think that would be my bit of advice to people: is to to accept, to surrender. And, and and deal with what you can and accept what you can to deal with. Yeah, that's such a great piece of advice because in a time where we really can't control anything, what we can control, so what we what we consume um, physically and visually, so our routines, what we're doing, um, what we're eating, uh, our exercise, our routines, our habits, like we're all having to create new ones. So. You're right. Um, you mentioned vision there. We do have to be careful. Of course, we all need to be kept up to date with what's going on out there. But sitting and watching and being consumed by the news, 
hour after hour after hour is just not good for our mental health. So yes, if you need updates, by all means, watch those updates, but you need to take yourself away from that and, and, and focus on other things like the fresh air, the free time that we've now got, the jobs that we're able to do that I was decorating this weekend. We decorated the entire living room. We've been sandblasting the patio floor that's been, been needing doing. And I changed the oven, the fan on the oven this weekend. So, and it's doing those things. And I guess focusing on those things that we can control and do. And spending time with whoever you can spend time with, I guess. Well, within the restrictions of, I mean, obviously we can only spend time with our families at the moment. Yeah. So. Of course, they should be the most important ones in our life anyway. So we are having to spend, or we are able to spend more time with our families. But let's be real, a reality check as well. We've got three children, and my wife, and like lots of other parents, she's pulling her hair out with, with the uh, the stress at the moment with what's going on. So, uh, so um, I guess that's when we need to pull together and help whenever we can. So she actually went out of the house uh, last night on her own, away from the kids, to give her some just let up in this difficult time. Yeah, and I think that that is such a good thing to mention because there's no rule book for any of this. This is unprecedented, uncertain times. Everything is changing. Um, but what we can do, I guess, is listen to listen to ourselves and listen to our intuition and and be a partner. If you're in a partnership with with I don't have kids and I don't have a partner, but I would imagine you can have a conversation with your wife and she says to you, well, Richard, I need a time out. I need to go for a walk on my own. And just being able to sort of keep the conversation going, be patient, be understanding. Absolutely. Absolutely. And adapting as well. I think as a family or if you've not got a family, just as an individual I guess the second key point that I would make, if you're in my audience, and I guess you are right now. We are, we are. You've accepted what's going on. You've accepted that only so much you can do about it. And then it's about, I guess, doing what we're doing right now, and that is adapting, wearing a different hat. As you said, this is unprecedented. Reminds me in some ways of what happened 23 years ago in my life when I was sent to prison. I remember it was a drugs charge. I, I got involved in drugs, recreational drugs, and I was dealing drugs. I remember the judge saying to me, taking me down on the 2nd of January, 1997. I remember it. I almost lost the date there. I remember as I walked down the steps down to the cell underneath the courts, right. Well, first of all, I had to accept that. And I knew that I had to adapt and put you know, out of my mind the life that I had prior to me going to prison. Forget all the luxuries and all the ability to go wherever I want. And I just thought, right, okay, this is about survival now. And I guess that's what's you know, front of mind for me right now. It's about survival and adapting. I mean, look at us doing this virtually. This is not what I used to do. I didn't do webinars. I was two days ago, I was coaching five people presentation skills. I've never done that before. I'm having to adapt. Yeah. I think we all need to do that is to adapt. Yeah. Uh, our circumstances and, and the way that we live in the world and operate in the world to, to get through to the next day and just take it one day at a time. So I, Yeah. I highly, highly recommend that you watch um, Richard's, TEDx talk because he explains his whole story and this is one of the things that I want um, maybe people to take away from this conversation is we don't know what's around the corner we don't know what tomorrow holds all we know is who we are inside and it's it's a kind of um, it's a resilience and we not maybe, maybe some of us aren't too friendly with our own internal resilience because we've not been tested and now, whether we like it or not, we're all being tested. We're all being called to how can you rise to a situation that is beyond your control? And, um, you know, Richard's story talks through how he responded to it. And when you listen to it and you come from it from like a, a true place of no judgment of you don't know how you're going to respond to what happens, mm -hmm. um, you'll start to see maybe uh, what could happen in over the next 10 years as a result of this, um, this situation. And we're here to talk about Richard and his story, but just my story, if you don't know any of it, is when I had my wake up call eight years ago and mine was a near death experience, my own death. Um, I didn't exactly rise from that like an angel and kind of go, oh yes, well, I'm going to live live a much better life. I went through a few years of, what the heck's happened? I don't know. Depression. Um, I, I'm just going to ignore it. And I think 
the thing to understand is our um, our internal response is whatever it is, not to judge it. So you might be a parent at home and your kid is um, acting out, let's say. Understand that everybody is going through, I wanna go play in the garden. Well, you can't, we don't have a garden. I, I wanna go to the park. Well, you can't, we've already been out for our one walk today. What would you say to people who are sort of like hitting against that? How do I? Well, I just want to I just want to mention something you, uh, about a minute ago. You mentioned that you know a lot of us have not been ha had to be resilient and been through challenges like this before. Well, actually, I have this resilience workshop, and there's an exercise that I do in this resilience workshop, and it's I've just sketched it out while you've been talking. I get Amazing. It's the it's the bounce back a graph. I have it all yeah. done nicely on my slides. And that's my life, let's say, the ups and the downs of life. And I get everybody to do their own. I don't need them to yeah. disclose what they've been through. And what we find is every single person that's ever done this exercise with me, and I'm talking hundreds and hundreds, and they've already been through challenging times. Yes, of course, these are slightly different. But what I say to them, I say, look at your bounce back graph. After every dip, after every single dip, there's a way back. There is always a way back. So, yes, of course, this is unprecedented unprecedented but they have got the resources within them to get through this they have got the resilience and half of it goes on in here which links to my third and final point which is to be optimistic and you know going through our day-to-day -day lives as unprecedented as they are but be optimistic that they will get better because they always do they always get better there was i don't know if you're aware that optimistic people age more slowly they get ill less often and when they do get ill they return to health more quickly. Check out the telomere effect. It's a groundbreaking video on YouTube. The telomere effect. It's all about optimism and how life-changing, life-saving it can be. I'm 50. I know lots of 50-year-olds that don't look as old as me. And uh, so my, my third and final point in this in this broadcast will be to be optimistic. And that's where, it, that's where it's at right now. And that's I what I say to people. I love that. I'm I'm an eternal optimist. I would rather, um, yeah, I will never admit the glass is half empty. It's always half full. Um, this chart is so awesome. So we could go away from this talk and uh, from this from this session right now and draw it. So what what to, for the people who are sort of listening to this audio? What what are we doing? We're writing oh, our. Yeah. You get an A4 piece of paper, turn it on its side, do a line across the middle, and what you do is, on the left-hand side, put zero, that's when you were born, and you go from left to right, every five years, do little lines going down, and then, if things are going well in your life, you go above the line, and if they're going down, like the stocks and shares, which go up and down, if things are below the line, or I do them in colour, they're in the red, there's a challenge or a setback. So on my, on my bounce back graph, as I call it, there's a big red dot at the age of five and six. It's really painful. The loss of my mum. And the point that I make when I share this is the loss of my mum is permanent, but how I feel about it is not. And I, my, my feelings change over time. And I get them to, to identify one of the setbacks, one of the dips in their bounce back graph and say, are you still there right now? No, they're not. Which demonstrates that after every setback, there's a way back. Now, not only that, there's a thing called post-traumatic stress disorder that a lot of you will be familiar with. But when you go through challenges in life, there's a thing called post-traumatic growth, PTG. Oh. We grow in ways that we wouldn't have grown had we not been through that experience. So when I lost my mum when I was five years of age, I, I became more empathetic. I've always looked out for the underdog because I felt like an underdog as a child. So I might not have done that had I not lost my mum. We are growing as a community. Last night we were out. You might have been out banging pans and clapping at 8 p.m. for the NHS. That community spirit is taking place. That might not, well, would not have happened in the way that it is doing had we not been going through this crisis. So my point is, one, you've already been through some stuff. We don't stay there. We always come out of it. And there's growth in the process. So I'm just giving a bit, some snippets from my, uh, my resilience workshop there. But I think it's, it's vital information that we need to take on board right now. Yeah, no, this is so interesting. So every five years, roughly, if we look back at our life and we, we look at where we were and then the ups and the downs of it as a way to remind ourselves that we've overcome what we've overcome. So if we've done it before, we can do it again. It Absolutely. might be. This is an extreme example, of course, but it's, it's the same thing. We're going through challenges. And that's what it is. It's adversity. It's extreme adversity. And I remember doing this exercise with the Doncaster Council 10 years ago, 10 years, 2010. 
600 of them were losing their jobs. I did a keynote and a workshop, and I got them to think about a challenge that they'd experienced in their lives. And what was the good to come out of it? And some of them were able to do that, but there's one gentleman, and I'll never forget him. He said, yeah, it's all right for you. We're losing our jobs. I went, you are? Some of you... See, he wasn't doing the first thing I mentioned, which was accepting that some of them are losing their jobs. I said, and the way that you think about what you're going through right now will have an impact on where you end up next or your ability to go somewhere next. So I've, got, I've said it already. It's our thinking, our perception about this challenge, which will help us go through it. And I'm seeing this. I'm not even seeing this as a challenge, as, as something to kind of to, to fight. I'm, ju I'm, just, I'm just accepting it. Yes, it is challenging. But you know what? My mum's not here anymore. My two sisters are not here anymore. They'd give their... They'd do anything to come back here and be breathing this fresh air that we're able to breathe right now. So uh, that's where I start from. Am I alive? Yes, I am. Anything else is a bonus. My children are alive. We, we can feed ourselves and we're in a house. You know, right now, anything, anything else is a bonus. That's amazing. So just talk us then quickly through like your morning routine. Do you um, do you get up? Do you have a gratitude practice? How do you how do you sort of start the day? Now, I do know the value in, in being grateful. That's one of the things that we can work on, you know, that resilience muscle by focusing on the, well, the three good things that happened that day or what you're grateful for. I do know that that helps. And I teach this with my children. But I don't, I don't necessarily get up and do that. I'm just kind of thinking it all the time. Oh, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for the fact that I've got a vehicle and I'm able to drive it. And there might come a point where we can't drive our vehicles. Well, then I'll be grateful that I can still move around because move around because I can still walk. So I just think about it, generally speaking, rather than, sitting down and doing an exercise but when we're around the table i try and teach my children this and say so what when they were at school what 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 went well today at school and they tell me we'll share this with you we've got, we've got time my daughter said to my wife so my daughter who was she just turned 10 so she was nine years of age she said to my wife when she was putting her to bed last year she said oh i'm so excited about tomorrow and my wife helen said why what's happening tomorrow and isla said i don't know yet I don't know yet. So how's that? So I wonder where she gets that optimism from. It's by, it's by being around optimistic people and sharing these messages. But I personally don't sit down and do that exercise on a morning. My morning routine is to get up, have breakfast. Well, now it is. And think about the day, get the dishwasher emptied, put things away, and then focus on uh, what I'm going to do today. But previous to that, it was all over the place because I was traveling around the country and sometimes around the globe sharing my message. And, and I know that around the globe, people might not have heard of my mum's killer, but they get the concept. My mum was taken tragically as a child and I bounced back from that. And I know this from the bottom of my heart. I know it's challenging. I know this is adverse, but we will bounce back from this. And the whole society as we know it might be completely changed. But you know what? It'll be a change for the better possibly. And I think that that's a really awesome thing to take away from this is that what starts off as a to-do list of I must get up, I must think this, I must write my gratitude, I must do that, becomes a way of living. Richard is sort of saying to us that later down the line, this is who he is now. So this is something that the more we do it, the more we practice it, it's like exercise, it will become the muscles that we have. Um, and the second thing that I took away from that that I wanted to say to people, to give them sort of a bit of homework for the weekend, because you will be joining me again on Monday and on Monday we are talking to an anxiety specialist who is going to give us some tips around how to handle the anxiety that's coming up in us as a result of what's going on. But your homework for the weekend as set by Richard McCann is sit around your family table when you are having dinner this weekend and ask each person around that table what are you grateful for and keep going until you can finish and maybe do this after the meal has finished um, because I think everybody will probably want to get eating. But mm. this could become a new habit for your family. What are we grateful for? Because what we focus on grows. So where our attention goes, our energy flows. And if we look at what we have got, we've got a table, we've got food, we've got a family, we've got like many people are in all sorts of situations. So what can we focus on that we have got? So thank you so much for that um, that top tip there. Now, before we go, Richard is giving away his book on audio for free. Now, this is gonna... his um, Sunday Times number one best-selling book. So no, this... I'll, I'll, I'll just correct you. This is my latest book in the trilogy. 
It's called Just a Man. I've written three books as a trilogy. That one, I just because I own that book, I've just created the audio book for it. It's eight hours long. I've got a bit of a cold as well. It was, it was recorded in November. I'm giving it away to everybody. A goodwill gesture just to lift people's spirits because it's quite, well, inspirational people tell me, and quite spiritual as well. Amazing. And this is something that I'm sure we're all going to want to sort of start consuming more books now that we've got more time. So and we'll leave the link. So we're going to leave the link to his TEDx talk, um, the Telema effect, and um, a link so that you can grab a free copy of his book on audio. Um, I'm going to say I haven't got a link just yet because I've got to put it onto the, the to the uh, the cloud. But if you just go onto LinkedIn and, and look out for my post when it goes live, you'll see it there. It could be in two or three days' time. Anything. So it's all coming. So Richard, where can we find out about you for people that want to connect with you after this? Where can they go? Well, LinkedIn, just Google Richard McCann, uh, but my website is theicanacademy.co.uk. And on Twitter, I am I can inspire. I can from the Richard McCann. Those letters Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time today, guys. Thank you if you were able to join us live. Um, any questions, as I said, leave them in the comments. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at 11 a.m. on Monday for our show. Have an amazing weekend. Enjoy. Absolutely. creating new routines and enjoy the gratitude exercise and please tag me in anything that you're doing if you're watching this tag me um I've, I've had people sending photos of the globe um and saying nice globe i'm watching you live and um, you can tag me on a at a barnes author and i'll leave that in the comments as well so thank you so much stay safe stay well wash your hands and stay at home take care Bye-bye.